Is Darley Rudier guilty or innocent? Please convince me with your top five pieces of evidence, tangible or circumstantial to convince me of her guilt or innocence. I'm aware this has probably been discussed numerous times. I just happened to dive deep in this and wanted someone to convince me one way or the other. Please convince me with your top five pieces of evidence, tangible or circumstantial that point to her guilt or innocence. Darley Lynn Peck Rudier, born January 4, 1970, is an American woman from Rowlett, Texas who was convicted and sentenced to death for the murder of her five-year-old son Damon in 1996. She was never charged with the murder of her other son, six-year-old Devon. Case Background On June 6, 1996, Darley Rudier claimed that an intruder broke into the house, killed the boys and slashed her throat before escaping into the night. Rudier's then-husband, Darren, and their youngest child, Drake, who was seven months old at the time, were unharmed and reportedly asleep upstairs at the time of the incident. Darley's wounds described as more superficial and not life-threatening were temporarily patched up while Darley told the police of the horrific events that unfolded just an hour earlier. Some of the state's case evidence were, Coroner Janice Townsend Parchman testified that the boy's wounds were savage and deep, but described Darley's as hesitation wounds, possibly self-inflicted. Paramedic Larry Byford said Darley never asked about the condition of her children when she was in the ambulance on the way to the hospital. Charles Hamilton, a fingerprint expert who examined the scene, said that the only prints found belonged to Darley and her children. Tom Bevel, a blood expert, testified that the blood on Darley's nightshirt belonged to her sons. It had been sprayed on her and he suggested that this could happen as she raised her arms upward in a stabbing motion. Some of the evidence asserted by Darley's supporters include, Rudier was stabbed in the neck near a critical artery requiring emergency surgery, but prosecutors claimed the wounds were self-inflicted, photos taken at the hospital that show defensive black and blue bruises on Rudier's arms, and they were never shown to the jury. Additionally, bloody clothing belonging to Rudier and her children were put in the same evidence bag, risking contamination. The defense didn't call their own forensic expert to refute prosecution witness Tom Bevel's testimony that the blood spatter on Rudier's nightshirt was consistent with having repeatedly stabbed her sons. Rudier's supporters also say police tainted the crime scene, moved furniture and objects before photos were taken, and hastily concluded evidence of forced entry in an intruder, like a sliced window screen in the garage, and a bloody sock in a nearby alley had been staged by Router. Darley's supporters claim Darley was convicted and sentenced to death because of a video of Darley dancing at their gravesite spraying silly string, painting a picture of a heartless, cold-blooded murdering mother. It was actually Devon's seventh birthday. However, Darley was videoed sobbing during a memorial service prior to the celebration, but this part of the video was never shown to the jury. This speculation was determined with good merit. After the trial, one juror admitted, if we had been able to see the whole picture of what happened that day, I believe I would not have voted to convict. The jury asked to see the video seven to ten times most requested piece of evidence, which supported Darley's supporters' belief that video was the single thing that convicted her. In 2002, a leading forensic anthropologist determined that a bloody fingerprint found on a glass table did not match anyone in the Rudier family or involved in the investigation, and her current appeal is pending further advanced DNA testing. The state of Texas has offered to reduce Rudier's sentence to life without parole if she would admit guilt but she's refused, stating she wouldn't concede her guilt because she maintains her innocence. I want posters who are convinced one way or the other, not unsure of her culpability. I will share a few really things that bother me. 1. Why didn't Darley wake up during the attack on her boys? 2. Why didn't Darren wake up during an alleged verbal and physical altercation and assault between the intruder and Darley? 3. Le were convinced she was guilty that first night, which I believe set in motion a series of mistakes and misjudgments which tainted the investigation. Just like OJ, I believe he's guilty but I also believe La made serious mistakes and misjudgments that tainted the entire investigation, for example lying, breaking chain of command during evidence collection and preservation, misrepresenting evidence. 4. How did the silly string video not get shown from beginning to end? Starting with memorial service to birthday celebration. It was filmed by a news crew. I believe the state manipulated the jury by only showing the dancing for example knowing how incensed it would likely make the jury members. To see an apparent mother in mourning dancing, smiling, spraying silly string at Devon's grave just eight days after the brutal murder of Devon and his brother. Number four really upsets me. The state manipulated the jury and it worked exactly how they intended. Backed up by at least one juror statements. That tells me the jury likely didn't focus on the true evidence of the case but were mesmerized by this apparent emboldened video. On the same token why didn't the defense show the beginning of the video which showed the memorial service? Or did he try and was denied? If denied, why? 
Thank you everyone. Do you think Darley is guilty or innocent? Why? After a week I'll post another thread with my beliefs on her guilt or innocence. Edit. I don't know who gave me a platinum award, they wish to remain anonymous. Thank you, very humbled. Edit. 29 August 19th Just FYI, I haven't made or even contemplated my thoughts on her guilt or innocence. I just point out the few facts that I actually believe are true and also reply to comments to stir other comments. Edit. Thank you to you slash 76 Fibrachemp and other posters who informed me there were two videos. There was the silly string video by the news and a separate one, tapped by the police undercover, showing a sober Darley Rudier. I didn't know this. Edit. Overall, I believe Doctor is guilty. I won't rehash why I believe this. However, I do believe her trial was not fair and under our laws deserves a new trial. Would it result in same result? That's not for me to speculate. Innocence 1. Her buxom blonde looks inspired ire in the public, along with the selective silly string evidence tape. The reaction to Darley was more of a cultural reaction against Anna Nicole Smith types and the departure from traditional, fundamentalist Christian belief systems. So, perhaps, a subconscious class reaction against how the newly moneyed were spending their riches, or, some sort of misogyny that she was an ignorant gold digger. The police also said she was just sitting there as the rescue attempts went down while failing to mention that they had told her to sit down. 2. Some facts can be misconstrued. The blood at the sink might be explained as Darley had to grab a rag to hold her neck once Darren, hope the spelling is correct, came downstairs. They never tested the murder weapon. 3. Darren. Though divorced, he still supports her and participated in the documentary about her innocence. Secondly, his presence upstairs. If she were to stage a double homicide, why do it when he was home? He could have woken up at any point. Was he in on it? Was there some guilty knowledge? Reportedly, his comment upon her arrival at the hospital was something to the effect of, Have you seen the tits on my woman? Not, is she okay? What about my kids? Also, Darren was trying to arrange some burglaries with some friends for quick money. Did he make any enemies doing that, or come into contact with compromised individuals who wound up attacking his family? Also, his sock was the one found in the alley. Is that a cover-up? 4. She was prescribed antidepressants after the birth of her third child. So, she was under medical care for her mental health, not grappling with undiagnosed PPD without any professional help. 5. The life insurance policies on the two boys did not total out to some ludicrous settlement. It only covered the cost of their funeral. Guilt 1. Her husband's business was failing. They were looking at foreclosure. She feared her children would have to grow up in poverty. She started journaling, but gave it up because she didn't want her kids to see her sad. Clearly, this couple liked their lifestyle. But, if in one breath, they're in financial ruin, the next moment she's out agreeing to travel to the Caribbean with other neighbors. Was it a roller coaster ride of peer pressure and to avoid public shame? She sort of fits the profile of the female family annihilator as perceiving murder as some merciful act. 2. She was smarter than people gave her credit for and knew that detail about her neck. She knew to grab the knife and use the 911 operator as an involuntary witness. She had some type of criminal intelligence or, again, Darren was involved. She might have figured she could play dumb and get away with murder. 3. Rage at Darren for his business failure directed at his children to hurt him for ending her lifestyle. She didn't work. She couldn't maintain that standard of living. She also lost years of potential career development to be a trophy wife and raise their children. Perhaps, she blamed him because she had little control over the computer business aside from the popularity contest element. Then, she fails to kill Darren or the baby because she conceals her identity as the murderer from him. If she came at him with a knife, he looks like he could have fought back. 4. The blood underneath the glass has always thrown me as well as some evidence suggesting she vacuumed at one point? Odd. 5. This intruder reminds me of the Ramsey case. An intruder who felt so at home that they didn't bother to bring their own weapon? The backyard gate was closed and latched. I cannot imagine an intruder frantically fleeing then pausing to secure the gate. Maybe he didn't want anyone coming in to harm them, wait. There were hesitation marks on Darley's wounds. The boys were attacked before Darley. The wine glass was broken on top of Darley's blood on the kitchen floor. She claimed in one story that the sound of glass breaking woke her, which means she could not be bleeding on the floor first. The sock found near the neighbor's garbage can had her DNA on it, along with spots of her children's blood. It was Darren's sock, as confirmed by him.
The intruder crossed a dark and crowded garage through a narrow path without disturbing the items in the garage or the dust on the windowsill. Guilty defensive wounds, the weapon used was a knife, her throat was superficially slashed, yet she had no defensive cuts on her arms, just bruises? Light sleeper. Darley was a notoriously light sleeper, yet she slept through not one but two attacks? The Pomeranian. The two children were attacked by an intruder, yet that dog didn't go absolutely ape. Lack of motive and DNA. There are rarely cases where I feel someone is guilty beyond a reasonable doubt, but if there is one this is it. There was no foreign DNA found. The lack of motive never made sense, either no sexual assault, robbery, etc., just a random nut that broke in, stabbed two children, and attempted to cut a mother's throat? Right. Guilty every day of the week. My top four reasons, in no particular order, are the crime scene, staging, broken glass on top of her trail of blood, no one else's blood just hers, the cleanup at the sink, the point of entry and exit to the home, the fly screen cut from the inside, and the knife put back in the butcher's block, zero evidence of someone fleeing the scene, they had a broken side gate held together with electrical tape, zero evidence of fingerprints, blood, footprints etc. She's still alive. So, this random person, with zero motive, not robbery, not sexual, violently stabs two little boys to death but just wrestles with the mother on the couch, and decides to just slice her neck, not kill her? Ridiculous. The Pomeranian who according to neighbors enjoyed barking, I have one of my own, he's a great little watchdog, somehow stayed silent throughout this entire ordeal. I could go on and on, but that's my top four. All I need is one piece of evidence that shows an intruder was in the house. Just one. There isn't any, because there wasn't one. All the blood, DNA, fingerprints, etc., belong to Darley or the boys. It stuns me that this case is still a question mark to some people. I can only assume those who aren't convinced of her guilt simply haven't read a thorough breakdown of the evidence slash case. She was found guilty beyond a reasonable doubt for a reason. Actually it was many, many reasons. Intrusion story does not hold water at all. To wit, the screen was cut from the inside, the dust on the sill. Around the window and on the garage floor were undisturbed even though an intruder supposedly entered and then left, in a hurry this time, the same way, the automatic light in the yard should have still been on for almost 15 minutes when authorities arrived, but wasn't on at all, the dog was unbothered, her husband and youngest child were unbothered by a supposed double murder followed by fight for her life by Darley Just. Downstairs, and so on. Blood. She was covered in her blood and had the blood of the victims on her. A sizable amount of her blood had been cleaned from the sink, one might say hidden from investigators, the weapon and scene was all root your blood, the blood wasn't on any broken glass, but was under some of it, not fitting her story, like most evidence, and even the sock only had root your remnants on it. Murderer behavior. Killers tend to use a weapon with which they are familiar. They also tend to first incapacitate the person most likely to prevent them from killing. In this case, we have one known weapon which was from inside the home and unfamiliar to any intruder yet was obviously very familiar to the person, Darley, who we know for a fact held it on the night in question. Her knife, her fingerprints, her blood, and her children's blood. Plus, she was supposedly left asleep right next to her sleeping children by an intruder who initially acted as if she was not there. And who died first. The older boy, who would have been the bigger nuisance to Darley, the one convicted of murder. The story doesn't add up. C1, 2, and 3. Now as many further inconsistencies in Darley's telling and retelling of her story. Throw in her jailhouse letters in which she goes back and forth between vague accusations of mystery intruders and miraculous recollections of a specific acquaintance. Now sprinkle in her inability to answer questions on the stand, even though she answered in her then recent letters and when previously questioned. She cried, expressed horror when her jailhouse letter were read aloud, and said some version of I don't know 70 odd times. Investigators found no evidence of an intruder and none of the evidence collected truly fit Darley's story. Everything, and the kitchen sink. No evidence to match her intruder story. No fingerprints, footprints, blood, hair, etc. Everything we've got points to a double murder that originated and was completed entirely in that house without any outside involvement. Motive. Unnecessary to convict especially with the evidence-slash-case against Darley. The evidence points to her, much of which goes against her story, and some of which, like the bloody sink, appear to be part of a haphazard cover-up. I implore anyone who isn't in the guilty camp to read a thorough case recap like the one linked below.
If you read that and are still unsure, it can only be because you're a how could a mother do that type. How? The same way thousands of other parents have murdered their children. I thought this was a great long read article from the Fantastic Texas Monthly. I believe Darley did it, but I have no idea why. She may just be a narcissistic sociopath and losing her children bothered her less than having them around. The boys had just started their summer break, so they were now home all the time, giving Darley less alone time. It can be stressful to mother a baby and older kids at the same time and I think she was over it. For guilt, no forced entry, unless you count the window screen cut from the inside of the house, no evidence of an outsider at the crime scene. This was a messy scene and it's hard to believe that the perpetrator would be so good at covering their tracks but so bad at killing Darley. Murder weapon from inside the house. Darley telling 911 that she touched the murder weapon and not following instructions to provide care for her children. I genuinely don't know. The problem I have with assuming her guilt is that no one seems to be able to point to a motive. If she wanted to start over without kids, why leave Drake alive? If she did it in some kind of psychotic fugue, would she have had the wherewithal to stab herself in the neck in a way that was almost, but not quite, fatal? But if she didn't do it, I have no earthly idea who could have. I guess it's possible it was some kind of wannabe serial killer, but if so, they managed not to leave any evidence of their presence that we know about. These are the type of cases, like JBR, that I have such a hard time with, because no option makes any damn sense, and the further down the rabbit hole I go, the more frustrated I get. I also wonder if a truly guilty person would continue to attract attention, like participate in articles and documentaries, after all of these years. Could the just be narcissism delusion who knows? I also can't understand why she would do with that to two kids, and leave the baby and husband untouched. I don't have five points, but just wanted to say, this should not be a death penalty case due to the reasonable doubt as to her guilt. The fact so many are even having this discussion is proof she doesn't belong on death row. That trial was an absolute shit show by any measure. My thing is, what evidence is there that Darren didn't participate or do all, most of it? Why is just Darley being thrown under the bus here? I could definitely see him helping stab her and put those bruises on her to make the thing look more real. Neighbors reported some cold, creepy comments he made shortly afterwards too. And the whole thing about him hiring someone to steal his car or whatever for insurance purposes is weird, weird, weird. Emo he got off because he's a white dude and it's Texas. He was probably just a better liar than Darley. They stayed together for many years after she got locked up so to me that implies they were in it together to some extent, not unlike the Ramseys. I don't believe she's completely innocent, quite the opposite. But life in prison is the proper sentence in this instance. I waver back and forth between guilty and innocent, but I always thought it was strange that Darren had previously planned a home burglary insurance scam. Source. Blood spatter evidence indicated that Darley was wounded in the kitchen over the sink, and then the sink was cleaned. There was other blood evidence that didn't match up with Darley's account of events. Her entire account of what happened is illogical. Either someone broke into rape slash molest her, regardless of the children there, or they broke in to attack the children unprovoked. But they couldn't do both at the same time. There were no real signs of a break-in, and no real motive given for a break-in. The weapons used for the attack came from the kitchen, and the knife that was used to cut the screen was put back into the knife holder. Anyone breaking into a house to commit murder or even to threaten homeowners, won't waste time looking for a weapon in the house, they'll bring one with them. The silly string incident does not count as evidence, and for every person who thought it was a sign of not caring, another dozen people would see this as a grieving family trying to help children come to terms with the death of two children. Rucher supporters might claim that this might have poisoned public opinion against Darley, but I think that's just a strategy to avoid addressing the evidence that convicted her. My theory is that Darley was fighting with her husband that night, and after he went to sleep, she killed the children as a revenge murder. It does happen that one parent will eliminate the children to hurt the other parent, especially when there are tensions in the marriage. First of all, how are they sure that there were only the fingerprints of the inhabitants if they never dusted the murder weapon for fingerprints? Second, what was her mental state in the time leading up to the murders of two of her children? I'm not saying she didn't do it but if she was suffering from a condition like postpartum depression, which can occur any time in the first year from birth onward, then it would have been a factor in why she might have done it. And third, like you said, 
Why didn't Darren wake up if he heard his wife killing his kids? I know a lot of women become light sleepers after giving birth in order to tend to their children when they wake up crying and I don't know if it's the same with men. As to if I believe she's guilty, I don't know. But I agree that the trial was poorly done as critical evidence was not shown as thus the investigators bungled the case. They never dusted the murder weapon for fingerprints because Darley admitted during her initial 911 call that she had picked the weapon up after the fact. They did dust several other knives from the knife block, not including the bread knife used to cut the screen, and several other surfaces in the house to determine if there was incidental contact by someone outside the family, there wasn't. As far as postpartum depression, it's certainly possible. Before the murder, she was allegedly contemplating suicide. During his testimony, Darren mentions having to come home from work to console her and finding out she had broken a bunch of OTC sleeping meds out from blister packs. She was also taking amphetamines in an attempt to shed baby weight, and smoking marijuana, something the defense was able to get excluded from the trial until the penalty phase. While pot isn't exactly a murder drug, drug interactions can be weird scary stuff. As far as Darren sleeping through the murder, I think it's plausible. Both children were stabbed in their sleep, and lung wounds, blood in the throat may have prevented them from crying out or screaming, similar to Kitty Genovese. Screaming, similar to Kitty Genovese. Screaming, similar to Kitty Genovese.